Now this is very early because, I mean, if you look within the, uh, the Jewish tradition, the Bible, the, the Old Testament is really, it's gathered over about 900 years, basically, I mean, according to modern scholarship. And, and you have, you have a, there's four dominant versions, like the Yahweh, the Elohim, the Sacerdotal, uh, and you'll get some very, you'll get some big differences. The, the, within the Christian tradition also, the, the final codification is already 325 when, when there's an agreement on the three, uh, on the four uh, uh, Gospels at the Council of Nicaea. The companions of the prophet himself were the ones that gathered and did this. And they were people who memorized the entire Quran from the prophet based on this oral tradition. So the Quran itself, and this is really important to understand, the written Quran is not the primary source in which the Quran is protected. It is protected through oral transmission. This is used, one, for people who don't memorize the Quran, and two, as a crutch for people who memorize it to go back and be reminded if their teacher isn't there or somebody else who isn't a hafid. But I guarantee you, when they finish a printing of Quran, they send it to people who memorize the Quran orally to check it. They don't check it against other Qurans. They send it to several hafal, or the, 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 the people who memorize the Quran, and they will look at it. Imam al-Qurtubi tells a very interesting story in his tafsir, uh, in his commentary on the Quran, under the words uh, when uh, the Quran says, we have revealed the, this reminder and we have taken it upon ourselves, meaning God, it's, it's like a royal we in Arabic. And we have taken it upon ourselves to protect it. Imam al-Qurtubi says that there was a Jewish man who wanted to find out from the three traditions about the, their books. And so he took a Torah and he copied the entire Torah in Hebrew. And he put mistakes in it specifically. He went to a rabbi and he gave him the Torah and he asked him to read the entire Torah and tell him if it was a good addition. When he came back, the man said it was an excellent addition, even though he knew there were mistakes in it. When he went to the Christian, he did the same thing with the Gospels. And the, uh, the Christian also said that it was an excellent addition of the Gospels. He did the same thing for the Quran and he went to a Muslim scholar and asked him to read it and he had his mistakes in there and the Muslim scholar told him when he came back, you have to burn this because there's mistakes in it. Now, if this is like an apocryphal story or a heavy rap, I don't know, it's historical validity, but I think the point is very well made that the Muslims really do view the Quran and rightly and justifiably so as a book that is preserved since this early time. Now, in terms of what exists today, the, the Quran, we definitely, without any doubt, by, by even the consensus of Orientalists, have several parts of the Quran from early first century Islam. There would be some debate amongst Orientalists whether there is actually an edition of the Quran that goes back to this original Uthmani edition. The Muslims would say that there are two, possibly four. There is a copy now which is called the Samarkand copy, or Samarkand, which used to be southern Russia, which is now in Tashkent. And it is definitely a first century, but is it one of the original Uthmani? The Muslims believe it is. And there is also one in Egypt that definitely goes back to the year 68 after Hijra. Without a doubt, it's on gazelle leather, which lasts an incredibly long time. And then you also have uh, a, an edition which is in Nejef in Iraq, which is, uh, says at the end of it, and it's written in an authenticated Kufic script from that first period, it uh, says at the end that this was written by Ali, the fourth caliph. So, we believe that we do have original texts from this first period. But even if we didn't, there's no doubt in a Muslim scholar's mind, and the vast majority of Orientalists that have really examined this situation, like R.A. Nicholson, 
in his book called The Literary Ara uh, History of the Arabs. He was a Cambridge scholar, teacher of A.J. Arbery, who, who translated the Quran or interpreted it into English. Nicholson says there's really no doubt about the, authenticity, the historical authenticity of the Quran. Now this is not somebody who believes in, in, in the revelation, but he is accepting that the book is intact in terms of uh, its uh, historical authenticity. That this is the book that this original community was, uh, was hearing and was seeing. And so I'm just going to end it there and open it up for some, uh, just if there's any questions.